بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاءوا من بعدهم يقولون ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم صدق الله العظيم My dear respected brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh the life that we're leading right now is a is a mad life it's it's a very busy life a lot of you understand that we've got a lot to do and we've got less time to do it in and what happens in this is that we get really sucked into this world of you know get this done get that prioritized get that prioritized and so on so it's always good if somebody just comes up to us once in a while and says you know what you know in this life even if somebody came up to us and they said to us you know what you get this bonus if you do this if somebody comes up to you and says, you get this bonus, what's that bonus? Or oh, free money, go to the DSS, you know, what a free money. They quickly tell us what to do and we're all, you know, well, not all of us, but you know, you guys, mashallah, yeah. Whoever's on to that, whatever bonus, even at work, they might give you a bonus. They might say, well, if you work on certain days, you get double the pay. Or it might be that these certain nights you're going to get extra. Or if you, if you sort of settle in Dubai right now, you know, a lot of people have this big dream, right? Go to Dubai and uh, you kind of stay there. You've got big salary. They pay for your health. They pay for this and all that. Oh my God, it can't get any better. They give you a place to stay. They give you a car as well. They give, there's no tax on the salaries. <laughs> you know, like, can't get any better, right? And if I work there, they start calculating. If I work there for five years, I make more money than I make here for 15 20 years you know I better go there not only to realize that our brothers over there are more you know loving the horses than ourselves you know that was the, the, the horse racing and so on the more into that and the more into well if you've got a white skin if you've got red skin then mashallah you better go out there I think the minute you come off the plane they're gonna roll out a red carpet for you right but if you're like me and the rest of us here <laughs> right <laughs> Right? You better not have this dream because I know a lot of brothers who come back and said, you know what, that's not for us, man. <laughs> that's not for us. Because they, don't give, they only give you respect because of certain things. But anyway, my point was that people, people go to Dubai, people go to these places, right? Because they want to earn money quickly. You know, life's too short to try and earn the same salary of 15, 20,000 pounds throughout your life. Why not get a 30,000 salary or 40,000 salary straight away? Now, people are doing all sorts of things to try and make their life better. Some people are looking for six-figure salary. And we know that they're looking for five figure, six figure, and if they could, a bit more. Then investing properties, you know, you just invest in a flat, everyone knows it. You invest in a flat, and that pays for itself. And after a little while, you're making money on top. Everyone wants to do that, everyone wants to put it into a business, and so on. And you know, if I asked you to put your hands up, you'd all say that you know, you've got some kind of plans in the future for that. Now, isn't it good? Wouldn't it be good if somebody came up to you and said, Look, you're not, you know, we all know we're not here for good and we need some quickies for the next world. When I say quickies, we need to be told that, look, Rasulullah said, if you do this, this you're going to get you know, things that are going to happen for you really quickly in the Akhirah. And all you need to do is hold on to this few simple reward or these actions for those rewards. And inshallah, you're going to make quick time in the Akhirah. This is what this talk is about. So I'm going to give you several ahadith which are going to give you simple actions for the greatest deeds for Jannah, to get to Jannah, and for the greatest deeds for the Akhirah, and the greatest deeds that will make us be next to the Prophet on the Day of Judgment in Jannah and so on, or be the closest to Allah. So this is this talk. But having said that, what I want you to understand guys is that please, don't take this talk as, you know, as the only thing you're going to do. Please. Yeah? You still got to do all your salahs, you still got to you know, do your fasting, you still got to do everything. You know, I'm going to tell you certain hadith like, you say this, that's it, Allah's going to enter you in Jannah. You say, whoa, I don't need anything else, man. You know, who said I'm going to stay up for Fajr and this and that? I don't, I'm just going to practice this little deed and I'll get there. No, no, no. These things I'm giving you are bonuses. They're like, basically, you know, when you go to a, a shop, a Holland and Barrett or something, and you want some supplements, and you want, you want to build your carbs or whatever, they're going to give you some supplements, and they're going to say, look, you know, these, this powder here, 
get these gigantic, you know, have you seen the size of those? These, these brothers know, yeah? You know the size of those things they give you, right? You think your muscle's going to be big as that thing, right? Right? Yeah, you wish, right? Anyway, <laughs> they want you just to buy the thing, right? But anyway, you're buying it, you're taking it for yourself. Why? Because you believe that this supplement's going to work for you. You know, you take this every single day, three times a day, whatever. But what are you going to do? You guys know it. You've got to go to the gym, guys. You can't live on kebabs all your life, chicken and chips, and put all that fat down your stomach, and then take all that inside as well. It's not going to do anything. You all know that. You've got to burn it off inside the gym. On top of that, you take the supplements and Alhamdulillah, you know, your muscles are going to be ripping that, that shirt of us, right? And you know, please don't do that in front of the sisters. You're supposed to wear loose clothing, guys. Loose clothing, yeah. Honestly, be, some guys have a problem. You see them, right? The guy's going to the gym. Fine, Alhamdulillah, here you're going to the gym. You're looking after yourself, right? You ain't got a belly like me or like others, right? Alhamdulillah, is good, yeah. But the thing is, why do you want like... <laughs> He comes out right, on the streets, right? Tight, tight top, right? All his carbs and his biceps and everything, you know. And he'll wear a tight sweater, a thin one as well, that's gonna show all his muscles. And he's gonna, <laughs> sister, I'm here. <laughs> you know, he's advertising his body. Now, come on, Rasulullah Sassim did say that, be, you know, wear loose clothing. You're not supposed to uh, advertise all your carbs. You know, alhamdulillah, it's good down there. I do for your wife once you get married. But anyway, my point was, right, that just as those supplements you're going to take for yourself, they're based on you burning, burning, you know, doing a lot of work in the gym and having a healthy diet and having, you know, good other stuff. And then on top of that, these supplements work. The same way, the things I'm going to say to you today will only work for you if you're doing the other normal things for the, for the deen. For at least do your five fourth daily prayers, at least. Of course, you should do the sunnah and nawafil on top. But if you got, you know, if you're not doing that or if you're just on the borderline of deen, just please don't forget, you can't do this stuff without having your salah in place, your five Salah and so on in place. So anyway, let's go ahead. What what are we after? If you're after, if you're, you know, we have a lot of gatherings, and in those gatherings we have, um, we we have sometimes, you know, we say a lot of stuff, and and sometimes you think that oh, astaghfirullah, you know, what have I just said in that in that gathering? You want that to be forgiven by the time you finish the gathering. Well, there's a hadith for that. There's a hadith for that. And I, I understand that you know you could go to some place and you could find that, that, that you've just wasted your time. There's been a lot of things said that are not going to benefit you of the akhirah. So Rasulullah said that whosoever sits in a gathering, man jalasi fi majlisin, fakathura lagatuhu. And in that gathering, there's been a lot of, sort of shouting, you know, uh, raising the voice and so on. Things have been said that, you know, may, maybe they shouldn't have said. We're not talking about sinning and so on, but we're talking about wasting time. He said, if he says the following thing, if she says the following thing, before they get up from that gathering, and this is a Sahih Hadith in Tirmidhi, if they say that before they get up from the gathering, Allah will forgive everything that happened in the gathering. Allahu Akbar. Yep. So that, these are the words. Subhanakallahumma. I want you to say after me. Subhanakallahumma. Guys, please, together. Subhanakallahumma. Wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha. Illa anta. Astaghfiruka. Wa atubu ilayk. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you say this, everything you've done in that gathering, whatever gathering that is, will be forgiven. And the Sahaba used to have a practice of saying this. This means, Subhanakallahumma, glory be to you, Allah. You are free from all blame. Wa bihamdika, I praise you. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. I bear witness that there is no other God except for you. Astaghfiruka, I seek your forgiveness, your pardon. Wa atubu ilayk, and I return back to you. This is a translation of that. So that's one simple thing you can do with the, with the startup. Next thing is, I'm going to ask you, and I want you to raise your hands for this. Who wants one million rewards in literally, literally seven seconds? Put your hands up. Go on. One, one million. Uh, now, now, put your hands down. Who wants to have one million sins forgiven? It's minus sins this is in seven seconds. The same seven seconds. Put your hands up. And who wants to gain? A palace in Jannah through seven seconds, the same seven seconds, put your hands up. Put your hands up. Alright, guys, okay, good. But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you this because I don't think you're going to do it, right? Uh, might as well move to the next hadith, right? Is that right, yeah? Um, okay, the next hadith, I'm only joking, yeah? 
Okay, now what is it? It's a hadith in Tirmidhi. It's with a good chain. It's a hadith in Tirmidhi. It's a good chain. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he said, whosoever goes to the marketplace. So marketplace means anywhere there's market, there's stalls, there's shopping, whatever. People are busy with the dunya and so on. You pass by there. You don't even have to go to the market to buy something. You pass by there and you say the following words. You say, La ilaha illallah. Come on. Wahdahu la sharika lahu. Lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu. Yuhyi wa yumitu. Wa huwa hayyun la yamutu. Biyadihi al-khayr. Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer. That will take you about sec- seven seconds to say. In one instant, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alfa alf hasana. You get one million good deeds there and then. You get one million sins forgiven there and then. And Allah will create for you and He will make for you a house in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Guys, you know this white chapel market outside there? If I was you, I'd be going up and down, up and down. Saying, La ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la ilaha. I'd be going up and some guy would stop me and say, Hey, hey, guy, guy. There's a million, million man. You know, you know. No, no, we're missing a palace in Jannah, palace in Jannah, I'm going up and down, right? So, um, you know, you've got a lot of shopping around here, right? And I, you know, and, and just dodge the pigeons on the way and just, just do the do, do, please. I, you know, you could do this straight outside when you go outside there. There's a market literally outside there. I want you to do this when you go outside there. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. If I ask you, who wants to, you know, if I ask you, how many Muslims are there on the earth right now? Tell me. Someone who wants to quickly go on. How many Muslims? One point, how many billion? 1.3, 1.4 billion, right? On the earth right now. Yes? Yes? Come on guys, yes? Okay, right. Who wants reward of every, for every believing man and believing woman on the earth? For every believing man. And these are not my words. These are not my words. These are words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this comes from a hadith in Tabrani. And this comes from a hadith that has also got a good chain. So, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you do the next action... And you will get the reward for every believing servant, male and female, that is alive. He didn't literally say alive. It could actually mean that he's dead as well. Allahu alam. But you will receive that. I'm just saying to you 1.4 billion because if it's to do with the people alive, that's what you'll get. But we don't know. Rasulullah could have meant it could have been uh, the people who are, who are dead also. These are the words. Now he, he said... He said, what you need to do is manistaqfara lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Whosoever will seek forgiveness for the believing men and the believing women, Allah will give them for every believing man and believing women, He will give them one good deed. Allahu Akbar. So I want you to do one thing right now. I want you to say with me, Allahumma ighfir lil mu'minin wal mu'minat. That means, oh Allah, forgive the believing men and believing women. If you want to, if you want to add on, so ulama have said that you say this particular dua from the Quran and you will get all of it. Some of you know already. You either can say that, which is in Surah Ibrahim, or you can say the other one, which is in Surah Hashr, 59, number Surah, ayah number 10. You can say, Rabb, I want to say, say with me, Rabbana fillana, wali ikhwanina, alladina, sabakuna. بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم that means that oh Allah forgive all the believing men and also includes women who have preceded us in Iman and do not leave in our hearts any hatred for them. Uh, and oh Allah, you are the most sort of you know merciful, you know the most most closest to us, Rauf, in terms of his his delicacy, his delicate mercy, Rahim, in, in, in terms of his specific mercy towards us. So that's the reward for that. Subhanallah al Azim. Now I'm going to ask you if you were in the time of Prophet. Now just before I carry on, please, sisters, sisters. Sisters, I, I know you're getting really excited now and you're saying loudly, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu. We're living on top of a souk here and, and, and you know, marketplace. But please, sisters, have mercy on the other sisters who want to listen. Thank you very much, yeah? Okay, thank you. See, that, that's, that's better. Mashallah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Um, right. If I ask you, if you were in the Prophet's time, 
and there was a slave, a believing slave on for sale. Has anyone got an estimation how much pounds, in terms of pounds today, how much pounds you would need to free that believing slave? Has anyone got an idea? Just put your hands up. Anyone? Anyone? No? Well, I'll give you an estimation. It'd probably be about 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 pounds, something like that. In terms of your money, it'll be, it'll be that. The, the more the believer is, is important to the Muslims, the higher the price would be. Right? Now, if the average slave, according to pounds, I'm trying to just give you pounds, all right? If the average slave, according to pounds, was about 2,000 pounds and so on, what do you think the price would be for a slave who belonged to the Prophet's family? Go on, tell me, how much do you think? How much? How much? Give me an idea of pounds, go on. Go on. 10,000? Yep. About 10,000 pounds, yes? Because they're putting the price up because he's from the family of the Prophet and they, they, they know that the believers need to release that. It's an insult to us to have a, a person from the family of the Prophet who's enslaved. Now Rasulullah has said, now subhanAllah, if he has said, for the next thing you're going to do, which takes how long? I'm going to tell you which takes how long. It takes one minute or less to do the next thing I'm going to say to you. One minute or less to do. And in that, you're going to get reward for freeing 10 slaves from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salam, which is the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the, 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 the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You know how much money that is in donation? That is 100,000 pounds. So I can give you the opportunity, and this is from Rasulullah sallallahu words, approximately, I'm not saying that he said 100,000 pounds, but I'm telling you that he said 10 slaves, and that equivalent, equivalent to that is approximately about 100,000 pounds for these particular slaves that you would free, which you could do in one single minute. Who would want that reward? Put your hands up. Uh, am I seeing some hands down? What about? Subhanallah, one minute. And he said you can do it in the evening as well. So that's two minutes a day. And you've donated 200,000 pounds a day. Guys, don't take this lightly. Seriously. He's doing the morning, doing the evening. What do you say? He said, whosoever will do this. This is a hadith in Abu Dawood and in Ibn Majah. And it's with a good chain. He has said, whosoever will say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. And according to some narration, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu yuhyi wa yimitu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. Okay? So you can, you, you can add the yuhyi wa yimitu or you can leave it out. Doesn't matter. If you say this 10 times, he has said you will get 10 rewards straight away. You will get 10, 10, good, 10 sins uh, forgiven straight away. In one narration he says, 10 destructive sins sins, major sins Allah could forgive by saying this, okay? And on top of that, he's told us that you will get the reward of freeing 10 slaves belonging to the family of Ismail alayhi salam, the progeny which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi belonged to, you will get the reward of freeing that. And on top of that, he said, Allah will send a whole group of angels to protect you from the shaitan from that morning, if you say after Fajr, or from that Maghrib, if you say after Maghrib, until the next dawn or dusk, Allah will protect you from the shaitan, subhanAllah. You, you get all of that inclusive. It's a bargain. You can't buy anywhere else. So take it while it's there. Right? And some of you are going to forget this by the time you've left this. And, and inshallah the recording of this so you can get the recording later on. We'll try and put it up inshallah on Safar Academy online on YouTube. We'll try, try and put it, I think the brother's going to put it in al waqia So we're going to try and promote that so that you can remember this as well. But if you've got the chance to write it, please write it and start straight away. You don't know, you could be dead tomorrow. So I'm giving you the opportunity to get all of this reward very quickly inshallah and you know, get your carbs up, you know. Get your carbs up. Yeah, don't forget your salah, yeah guys, yeah. Alright. Next one. If I ask, right, sisters, yeah, if I took you to Dubai and I said to you, here's the gold market, buy what you want. Seriously, I give you an oyster in your hand and say, Dubai is your oyster. Or Medina Munawara, you know, there was a, a souk, a dhahab. Maybe you, 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 your husband's never told you about that. Yeah? Maybe, <laughs> right? Please, please don't tell my wife about it. Right. Um, if I told you guys, you go and you go into the, you know, you go into these, uh, I don't know, the Arab countries and you see these nice Ferraris, Lamborghinis and the latest, you know, cars and you just look at them, Bentleys or whatever it is and you could basically be an owner of one. If I told you that you could be the owner of as many of these fast cars you want, yeah? Yeah? 
Who would say no to that? Put your hands up. Who would say no to that? All that gold. Put your hands up. Oh, we've got some sisters who don't want gold. Okay, that's good. Um, who's the who's the husband of that sister there? Quick, quick, put your hands. Up. You you watch, you watch here. Yeah? Okay, if I added on top of that and I said right that forget the cars and the gold. If I said to you, you could own all the properties on your street. Whatever you want to do, you want to give sadaqah after that, that's fine. Who say no to that? Put your hands up. Properties of the whole of, let's say, maybe, you, maybe some of you are putting your hands up because you live in East London. So, sorry. <laughs> if I told you to put your hands up to own the houses of London, all of it, and you could do what you like, you can give sadaqah after that. Who would say no to that? Put your hands up. That's good, that's good. Now you keep your hands up because there's some rich places in London, isn't there? Right. Okay, so now Rasulullah has said, you say the next thing which is going to take you 10 minutes. 10 minutes only. Timed, I've timed it 10 minutes only if you say it properly. You will get more, better than whatever the sun rises above. Allahu Akbar. That's the whole world. And whatever it takes, guys, your Ferraris, your Mercs, girls, your, your you know, diamonds, your pearls, and your, you know, your silks, and your shopping all day, whatever, you know, guys and girls, your houses, your markets, your, you know, your clubs, whatever it is out there, the whole world, and whatever it takes, 10 minutes, you could get every single day, he has said, you can get this. And what he said, he has said, for me, this is himself, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, saying this. He says, La an aqula subhanallah, for me to say subhanallah a hundred times. For me to say alhamdulillah a hundred times. For me to say la ilaha illallah a hundred times. For me to say Allahu Akbar a hundred times is better to me. This is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying this. It's a hadith of Sahih Muslim. He said, It's better to me than whatever the sun rises above. Allahu Akbar. So I want you to use these 10 minutes of your day just to say these four things. You know, SubhanAllah means how glorified Allah is, how supreme He is, how you know, far He is from imperfection. Alhamdulillah means I am praising Allah. La ilaha illallah means that there is no other deity where they worship except for Allah. And Allahu Akbar means that Allah is the greatest. Okay, now if I told you that this is just the world, okay, now we want to travel to the next world. If I told you simply, you do the next thing in two minutes, two and a half minutes every single night. There's going to be no punishment for you in the grave. Who would want to do this every night? Two to two and a half minutes. Put your hands up. Come, put your hands up. Right? All you have to do is recite Surah Tabarak, the 67th Surah, Surah Mulk of the Quran. Just recite that every single night. As soon as you die, they're going to put you six foot down. You're going to be in the grave. There is no punishment of the grave because you read Surah Mulk every single night. Some narrations talk about Surah Sajda as well, but some narrations talk about Surah Mulk on its own. I'm going to make it easy for you just to do Surah Mulk on its own. Okay? So now you basically, come sisters, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sisters. Thank you, thank you. The gold market is still alive. It's okay. It's okay. I know how much it's worth. You don't have to tell the sister next to you. Thank you. Right. By the way, you've been recorded. All this about sisters has been recorded. Yeah? So all the other sisters watching this are going to say, Oh, those sisters, man. Those sisters, man. Okay, so please stay quiet. Thank you. Right, the next one. If I asked you that when you reach the Day of Judgment, you want Allah to let you off of a big thing you've done in this world that you're ashamed of beating him on the day of judgment because of that sin it could be a few it could be one whatever you've done if i ask you you want to be let off you want allah to let you off from that thing on the day of judgment right on the moment of the day of judgment put your hands up come on put your hands up put your hands up come on don't sign. teach me that you haven't sinned in life <laughs> all right we're all human beings Rasulullah sallallahu said, Man sarrahu, whosoever it makes it pleased for them. And yunjiyahu Allahu min kurabi yawmin qiyamah. If you want Allah to let you off, if He makes you happy, if He makes you happy, if he, this thing is going to make you happy, that you want Allah to let you off of great troubles on the day of judgment, then you should just let off or you should deal, give, give uh, an extra time, right? So you, you give some extra time for payment to a person who owes you money. Anyone who owes you any amount of money, either give them respite, give them extra time to pay off, someone who's having difficulty paying you back, or you just say simply, I'll let you off. Allah has kept 
for you, troubles of the Day of Judgment are vanished because you've done that in this world. So I'm going to leave that to th- for you to think about. If I asked you, there's many ways of getting under the Arsh. If I asked you on the Day of Judgment, you get under Allah's Arsh and you be with the Prophets and you be with the best of people straight away without you missing that chance and you want to know the easiest way to get down to that, who would want that? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Come on, put your hands up. Good, good, mashallah. What you will get is, this is Rasulullah SAW saying this, and this is Sahih Hadith Muslim. The last Hadith I said is a Sahih Hadith Muslim as well. The one about forget, you know, giving respite to a person who's, who owes you money. This Hadith is in Muslim. And Rasulullah SAW has said amongst many different people, he has said, you just you sit secretly. Secretly. No one's watching you. And you try and cry to Allah. That's all you have to do. Just break yourself in front of Allah. Oh Allah, you know, you know, how do you break yourself in front of Allah? Some guys, you know, I've met this guy once, you know, he, you know, he, he broke down in tears and then, and then he came up to me and he said, you know, that's the first time I've broken down in tears in my life after 40 years. Allah, after 40 years. I just can't believe there are people actually out there who can't break themselves, in, themselves down in tears in front of Allah. If you want to break yourself in tears in front of Allah, you do one simple thing. That is, you start talking to your sins to Allah in your dua, while you're in this dunya, about the things you're scared of that He's going to take you to account for. While you're in this dunya, just start talking. Just say, look, oh Allah, I'm so sorry I've done this. I'm so sorry I've done this. I really mean it. you gifted me so much and you gave me so much and you fed me and you clothed me and you gave me a house and you gave me shelter and you gave me you know such good freedom and so on and on top of that I still sin I'm so shameful you break up you can't do that you'll break up okay the next one if you want to come on the day of judgment and you want to find your scales weighty on the day of judgment by a simple deed then you do the following thing what is that well, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi has said that on the day of judgment, he said there will be something that will be very heavy on the day of judgment. These are two simple phrases you have to say in this world and just repeat them. And the more you repeat them, the more Allah will make your thing great on the day of judgment. This takes, you know how long it takes to say these two simple phrases? It takes you literally three to four seconds. I want you to repeat with me. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim Say it with me Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-Azim Glory be to Allah, the one who is so great Glory be to Allah, so sublime, so great He is So perfect He is And I praise Him, that's all you have to say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al-Azim Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said is according to Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, these two phrases, they are very, very beloved to Allah. They are light on the tongue. They are weighty on the scales. And these are the two phrases. Simply you say and you will get that for the next life. Allahu Akbar. Okay. Now the next thing is you've ended up on the Day of Judgment. You don't want to receive your book and be in a bad situation. Put your hands up if you want to receive the book and be happy on the Day of Judgment. Put your hands up. Come on. Put your hands up. It's a simple thing you're going to do. Thank you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, according to a hadith in Bayhaqi, and this has got a good chain. He has said, Man ahabba an tasurrahu sahifatu. Whosoever wants his book of deeds on the Day of Judgment to make him happy when he receives the book of de- uh, on, on the Day of Judgment, he said, fal yuksir fiha min al-istighfar. You should just carry on continuing and making abundance, seekness or seeking forgiveness from Allah Azza wa So say, astaghfirullah. Say, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Or you say, astaghfirullah, alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum wa atubu ilayh. You know, I seek forgiveness from Allah. I seek forgiveness from Allah. Or you say, I seek forgiveness from Allah. Allah the la ilaha illahu. The, the, the one from the one. There is no other deity except for Him. Al Hayyul Qayyum, the ever living, the one who keeps everything, sustains everything. Wa atubu ilay, and I return back to Him. Or you simply say Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. Say Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. I seek forgiveness from Allah and I return back to Him. I seek forgiveness from Allah and I return back to Him. Okay. Now you're on the day of judgment. You're about to stand in front of Allah. Now I've done this test several times and people are read the most scaring part for people is 
right? The most scary part of people, more than death, some people are scared of death, some people are scared of the grave, some people are scared of hellfire. But I've done stats of this, and most people, and I've done stats again and again, most people are scared of the time they're going to stand in front of Allah. Put your hands up right now if you want to meet Allah and Allah is happy with you on the day of judgment. Go on, go on. This is going to be the simplest deed you're going to do for this. Honestly, it's so simple that when you hear this hadith, you can say, What? Is that simple? That simple? No way. No way. But I'm telling you, yes, because it's come out of the mouth of the Prophet wasallam, And it's a sahih hadith. And it's in Abu Dawood as well. It's an authentic hadith. Rasulullah said, Inna awla nasi billah. The closest people to God. The closest people to Allah. Are those people man bada'ahum bis salam? The one who continues to try and be the first to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi That's how simple it is. You, you guys, you guys, when you meet a judge, just try and be the first to say salam. First to say salam. They say about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it was very, very difficult to beat him in salam. He was always the first. Even with young kids, it was very hard for them because even to young kids, he was the first to say salam. Right, first say salam. Who's going to be the first to say salam to the guy next to you right now? Ah, mashallah, mashallah. Good guys, good. Sisters, just salam. No talking after that. Thank you very much. Okay. You think I'm giving you a license right now? Okay. Right now, you've you've met Allah, and Allah is happy because of that simple deed that you did in the world. Now, who wants to know that Allah has made hellfire haram for you for the next simple deed? Put your hands up. Hell is haram for you. For the next deed, hellfire is haram for you once you go to the next world. So what did Prophet ﷺ say about that? He said, Allah Azza wa Jal has made فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَ عَلَى النَّارِ Allah has made the, the following individual, Allah has made for him or her, the fire of hell haram is forbidden. Whosoever says this so simple, and this is in Bukhari and in Muslim, whoever does the next thing, so simple, honestly, so simple to do. But you're just going to do it maybe a few times or once or a good few times. And if you're like me, you want to do more and more, you do it from the bottom of your heart. You do this. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha Rasulullah said, whoever will say La ilaha illallah just to please Allah, hellfire is haram for you in the next world. Allah. Come on guys. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. You probably think bid'a. Bid'a. Making a say la la. Okay. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. If you're a military person, just go ahead. La ilaha illallah. La il-. You know, I went to Hajj, right? And I'm, you know, everyone, everyone's saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik la sharika laka Labbaik. And you think, you know, I was, I was there last Hajj, I was thinking, you know, I wonder, I wonder if they, why don't they say bid that to each other, right? Because they're all doing the same tune, everyone's doing the same thing. And I wonder if the Prophet said that tune as well. When I say La ilaha illallah, they're all going to say bid that to me. So what happened is, I'm going through the tunnel in Makkah, right? And all these guys are, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Right? We passed by this Malaysian group, right? And this Malaysian group's going, Pastor go I thought, yeah, you're on, man. You're on. Right? I thought, subhanAllah, there's someone alive, right? Who's not going to do the bidah, right? So, guys, whatever you want to say, you want to say, La ilaha illallah. You say, La ilaha illallah. You will do whatever you want. Please do it. But you say it with sincerely from your heart to try and please Allah. This is a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim that will make, the, make hellfire haram for you. Okay? Now, you get to the next world and you look at your deeds. And who tell me this? Who wants to have the most deeds on the day of judgment? More than anyone else, put your hands up. And you know how simple this is, guys? Keep your hands up. You know how simple this is? How simple this is? This takes you two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening. And this is a Sahih hadith in Muslim. Two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening. All you have to say is Subhanallah wa bihamdihi 100 times in the morning and 100 times in the evening. 
Say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "No one on the day of judgment will come with more reward than you if you manage to do this after Fajr every day, 100 times. After Maghrib every day, 100 times. No one's going to beat you. Allahu Akbar. You will be there for what? Two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening. That's all it takes for you to do this. Okay. Now you've got that reward. Then you go to the doors of Jannah." And everyone's going to have a regret. And Rasulullah has forewarned us about this regret. And he's told us that this regret is, is going to happen with every single person. Every single person is going to have this regret. But you can reduce that regret. What is that regret? This is a hadith in Tabrani. This is a hadith with a good chain. Rasulullah has said, لَيْسَ يَتَحَسَّرُ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا عَلَى سَاعَةٍ مَرَّتْ بِهِمْ لَمْ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِيهَا Every person who reaches the doors of Jannah, they will have a regret over the moment they spent in this world where they did not remember Allah Azza wa Jal in that. So just remember that. If you, don't want, if you want to reduce your, your regret at the doors of Jannah, you need to just keep yourselves remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, now the, here comes the big one. Right? Here comes the big one. Who wants to go to Jannah Right, if I said to you right now, you know, your favorite, your favorite person in the world, whoever that is, okay? You know, from all these stars, some guys want to, you know, live next to, you know, Owen or, you know, who else? Come on, guys. Come on, give me another name. Soros. Soros. Is Soros? What a sorrowful guy, man. All right, who else? Come on, give me another name. Football player, go on. I don't know, man. I don't watch football. Go on, give me a name. Go on, give me a name. You're scared now, isn't it? Give me a name. What is it? What is it? Mercy, that's it. May Allah have mercy on making a Muslim. Amen. <laughs> right. So, if I said to you, you live next to mercy, right? Place for what? Argentina? What is it play for? Is it Barcelona? Yeah? Barcelona. Okay. The sisters know more than you guys. We've been making them do, watching them, making them watch football every single night. You guys, man. Wait till I see you. Okay. So, if I told you like, you want to go to your favorite person, whoever that is, and you want to live next to them, you know, anyone will say, please, please, get, give me a first class ticket to go and live next to them. I'll pay for that, right? I am offering you with the statement of the Prophet ﷺ to be in Jannah and to be no next to no other than the Prophet ﷺ himself in Jannah, a house next to him or a place next to him. Put your hands up for that. Come on, guys. MashaAllah. Okay, good. There's two things I'm going to say to you. Rasulullah said, I come to Hadith of Bukhari, whosoever will look after an orphan, one orphan even, in this world, then I and him or I and her in paradise, we will be like this. And he showed his two fingers. You'll be like this, all right, next to one another in Jannah. And according to another narration, one Sahabi, you know, one Sahabi used to bring their bring their water for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to do his wudu with. And the Sahabi, or the Allah, once you know, Rasulullah said, he said, go and ask me for a dua. Ask for that. So he said, As'aluka murafaqataka fil Jannah. He said, Messenger of Allah, I want to be next to you in Jannah. Prophet Sallallahu said, Awa ghayra Are you sure you're asking for that? Do you want something else instead? You know, meaning that it's, you know, it's not an easy dua just to make for, for a person, you know, that you want to be next. This is Rasulullah he said, ask him, please, I just want to be next to you in Jannah. So the Prophet Sallallahu gave a very easy deed. He, easy deed. He said, فَأَعِنِّي عَلَى ذَلِكَ بِكَثْرَةِ السُّجُودِ He said, and this is a hadith in Bukhari. He said, then help me, help me to achieve that by prostrating to Allah abundantly. Help me. To achieve that, that I want you as well next to me in Jannah. So help me to attain that and for this dua to be accepted by you doing plenty of sujood to Allah. The more sujood you do, meaning the more rakats you do, the more salah you do, the more Allah Azza wa will give it to you. Okay, now I'm going to ask you every day you get up from, for work. Okay, I'm nearing to my end, right? We're going to pray Salat al-Maghrib slightly because I've got a dua to do. Delaying Salat al-Maghrib 10 minutes won't, won't make a big difference. So I'm going to ask you, please just bear with me until I finish the next couple of hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has given us the next thing. Subhanallah, this is a beautiful one. And sisters, you need to listen to this, okay? Because sisters don't have the time. And he said it to a sister. He said it to his wife, Juwayriya radiallahu anha. 
His wife was so concerned about the Akhirah. One, once Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he read Salatul Fajr with his companions and his wife was with him at the back. And when he got up Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed by. His wife was still sitting in the corner. She was just remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. This is not just for sisters, brothers. You can do it as well. So he passed by and he saw his wife just sitting there remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. And he went away, done his good days, you know, whatever da'wah, everything, anything else he had to do. He came back. The whole time he came back, you know how many hours this is? This is six hours later approximately. He came back and he saw his wife Juwaiya sitting in the same place. Same place. And he said, Oh Juwaiya, what are you doing here? And she said, Messenger of Allah, I have been remembering Allah from the last moment you saw me till this moment. Allah. Six hours of dhikr, of remembrance of Allah. He said, Oh Juwaiya, had you said, had you said the, sa- the same thing I said, three times over, which you know how long it takes? It takes you 15 seconds. He said, had, had you said the same thing I said three times over, you would have got the same reward from Fajr till Dhuhr sitting here and remembering Allah. Allah. Yeah, this is a hadith in Muslim. This is a Sahih hadith in Muslim. And I want you to learn these words. Okay, and if you've got no time to learn this right now, you will look at the, you will look, look at the, um, the, the video later on because time is short for Maghrib coming, coming very close. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Come on guys Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Adad khalqihi Wa rida nafsihi Wa zinat arshihi Wa midad kalimatih Right, now I'm going to tell you the meaning of that Subhanallah wa bihamdihi I say that Allah is so perfect And I praise Allah Subhanallah wa bihamd, that's what it means. Subhanallah means Allah is perfect. From any imperfection, He is he's away from that. And wa bihamd means I'm praising Him. How much am I praising Him? How many times am I saying Subhanallah to Him? Adad khalqi, as many times He has created creation, as many of those creatures and creation of His exist, that's how many times I say Subhanallah to Him. That's how many times I say Alhamdulillah to Him. So all the human beings, all the jinns, all the drops of water that have come from the sky, all the clouds, all the fish in the sea, all the ants in the world, all the grains of sand, all the soil, all the leaves of the trees, any, all the winds that are blowing in the whole of the world, any creation of God, all the angels in the sky, in the heavens, anything Thing Allah has created, I say that many times subhanallah to him, I say that many times alhamdulillah to him. The next one, he said wa nafsi. Until Allah is not pleased himself I don't stop saying subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Allah. So, rida means pleasure bihamdihi means, uh, nafsihi means himself. So until he himself is not pleased, I continue to say that. And then he added wa zinata arshihi which means the weight of his throne whatever weight that comes up to I carry on saying subhanallah I carry on saying alhamdulillah I carry on saying that for Allah Azza wa Jal, I say that until he, he's, he, I reach the weight of his his own throne. And the next one is wa midada kalimati if you take all the ink, if you take all the oceans of the earth and you turn them to ink, if you take all the trees of the world and you turn them to pen, to pens, right? So you've got all the pens from the trees, you've got the, all the ink from the oceans, and you start to write about the beauty of Allah Azza wa and about Him and His attributes and His wonderful nature, the pens will finish, the ink will dry according to one ayah of the Quran, but Allah's praise will never finish. I say subhanAllah to Allah, I say alhamdulillah to, to, to Allah as many times as it will take the the inks and the pens to continue to write his his wonderful names and his wonderful attributes Allah Akbar. Now Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Come on. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Adad khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zinat arshihi wa midad kalimatih Right, if you say this more, you can say any time, it's not morning, evening, it's any time you want, three times, every third time you, re- you come over, you have received six hours of dhikr reward. You say six times, you reach a full day's reward of remembering Allah. You say, you know, nine times, you've got one and a half days of reward. You just carry on, just go home. The one of the things I do is at home, right? I'm going to tell you to do this as well. Go home and just, you know, happily, your family members know you're right, yeah? So you go home and just, you know, when you're doing the dishes, when you're sort of, 
you know, in your own things, whatever you're doing, just say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, adad khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinat arushihi, wa midad kalimati. Just repeat that, your family know you're okay, yeah? But don't go to work on Monday and start saying that, yeah? In front of uh, Joanne and in front of the like, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Right. But for that, I'm going to give you something else. Right? You're probably thinking, well, how, how do I go to work and do all the dhikr? Because if I start saying, <laughs> in a meeting, right, you're sitting there with 12 of them. <laughs> if you start saying all of that, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sure right, they're going to fire you by the time you finish the 10th time. right? So I'm going to give you one that you can do. Subhan, this is the best thing about this zikr. When they asked the Prophet they said, what is the best zikr that exists? They said, ayyul, ayyul dhikri afdalu ya Rasulullah. They said, which dhikr is the best dhikr, O Messenger of Allah? Ya Rasulullah. And he said, it's La ilaha illallah. What did he say? La ilaha illallah. I'm going to tell you to do one thing. I want you to now seal your lips. Seal your lips. Seal your lips. Seal your lips. That's the first time this has been quiet. <laughs> Alright, seal your lips. Now I want you to say in your mouth, moving your tongue but not moving your lips because you don't need to move your lips. Say La ilaha illallah. Go on. See the beauty of that dhikr? You don't need to move your lips. Go on, say it. No one needs to know you're doing it. You are absolutely sincere. It's you and Allah and all those guys in your meeting that don't even know you're doing it. Ya la ilaha illallah. That's the only dhikr that exists you can say with your mouth closed and nobody knows what you're doing. And this brings me to my point where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, maybe you know, you, you haven't got much time to do even some of this. But what do you do? Well, you just need to become sincere for Allah's sake. He has said in a hadith in Tidmid, he said, every person of knowledge, every person of knowledge is perished in the future. Rasulullah said, every person, alimuna kulluhum halka. He said, every single person knowledge is, is perished. Illa except for those who practice what they know. And then he said, every person who practices is, is perished, is finished. Except for those who do it sincerely. And he said, those who do it sincerely, they are ala hazdin wafir, they are on a great abundance of reward for the next life. Okay? So I'm going to ask you to be sincere for Allah's sake and do all of this. And I'm going to give you one final one, one final one before the dua. This one is going to be now. Some of you sitting there thinking, well, you know what? I just want the troubles of the, this world and troubles of the akhirah to disappear. I want Allah to be enough for all my troubles of this world and troubles of the next world. This subhanAllah is in Ibn Sunni has narrated this. This is a Sahih hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said, Whosoever will say this in the morning seven times and in the evening seven times, Allah will look after anything that concerns them, any worry you've got, anything that concerns you in this dunya or in the next world, Allah will will look after that subhanallah just need to say seven times it will only take you about 10 to 15 seconds to say it. you say hasbi allah la ilaha illahu hasbi allah la ilaha illahu alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arsh al azim hasbi allah say la ilaha illahu alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arsh al azim it means that allah suffices me the one, the, the, the God and the deity, there is no other deity besides Him. Alayhi tawakkaltu, upon Him I depend. And wahua Rabbul Ashir Adim, and He is the Lord of the great throne. This is, you say this seven times in the morning after Fajr, seven times in the evening after Maghrib, and Allah will look after all your affairs of this dunya and all the affairs of the next world. Jazakumullah khair.